What if everyone in here would share your most creative and brilliant idea that you have with the person sitting next to you? Or with all of us in this room? Would you still feel that it's your idea? Humans are social creatures. And what happens is that when they share an idea, they feel, or we feel, since we're all human, a feeling of possession. We're afraid to share. We're afraid to get judged. We are also sometimes have a feeling that what we can do is only us that can make it perfect. And I personally sometimes feel that I want to be in control of my creation. I want to be the only one. And sharing would be the exact opposite of that. You wouldn't have any control. But sharing is like a book when it's released. And the moment you publish it, then it's out of the control of the author. It gets out there. And this always brings some positive things. And I'm going to tell you three positive elements that will happen, and then one story. The first thing that will happen is a shift in the perception, in your perception, of your idea. And the moment you share it, people will look at it in a different way. They will look at it with their own experiences, with their own cultural backgrounds. They will start analyzing it. They will start having a meaning or creating an idea that they have of your idea. The second thing that will happen, or the second thing that it will happen when you share an idea is that you will realize that it is not perfect. And maybe it's far, far away than perfect. But then maybe you are also all right with that. Maybe you accept it. And after all, there is nothing perfect in this world. The last thing I want to tell you that will happen when you share an idea is that your idea will stop being yours and it will become ours. Because all of us will add meanings, will add emotions, feelings to it, that you perhaps didn't really have at the beginning in your idea, but we add on to them. And this is a very positive thing. One idea becoming ours. And I'm going to tell you why it's a good idea but I'm going to do it through my experience. And it is my story, but it could actually be your story. It could have been. And it's the story of this painting that here it is. Try to imagine that your mother is coming one day and asks you to paint a big piece for her. Of course, it's your mother, so you probably say, at least consider it. And if you like to paint like I do, then you will say, hell yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do something big and beautiful for you. That's what I did. And since she wanted a big painting, I made it big. Two meters times 120. And as you can imagine, when it's something this big, that you really need to think, what am I going to put in there? So I used a lot of time planning, and I decided that I wanted to portrait the idea that I had on my mother. The idea of this very alive and energetic person that was my mom. And I started painting and it was going fantastic, great. Until at a certain point, something happened and my world went upside down. She got cancer. And after a little while, she got a stroke too. And my world was not the same as before. In a couple of months, with physiotherapy and chemotherapy, my memory of my mother started fading away. It started to be replaced by the sickness. So when I looked at the painting and it was still not finished, I couldn't see the same. It wasn't there, the purpose. It wasn't there, the idea that I had of my mother. And I didn't know how to move on, but I knew that this was going to be the last gift 
that I will give to her. So I want it to be perfect. I want it really to be mine to her. But again, didn't know how. Suddenly, she wasn't there in the same way. I mean, she was there, but not really the same way. Until one day, a friend of mine simply took a brush, took some color and splashed it on the canvas without telling me. So I stood there looking at him doing that, and I thought, oh, uh, that's not what I want. <laughs> that's not going to be like perfect. That's ruined. But at the same time, something interesting happened. I started feeling relieved because he had a vision for that painting that I had lost. I didn't know where to go with it, but he just started doing it. And I could actually follow up. So in the next couple of days, I found myself with more and more friends painting together, sometimes even four people at the same time. And what was interesting is that I realized that my fear of not sharing, my fear that I need to be in control, was completely wrong. Because all of that was caused by my possession of this piece. It was mine. It is mine and it needs to be perfect. But sharing it actually allowed me to continue. We managed to finish this painting all together. And when I look at it, I still see all the meanings, all the ideas that I had about my mother. But I can also see the other people. I can see what their meanings, what their ideas were. And some of them are related to my mother, but not all of them. There are stuff in there that I have no clue what they are. <laughs> <laughs> but it still is ours. The other really good thing that happened because of this is that I was, together with the others, able to finish this in time for my mother to see it. So that was, for me, the most important thing that happened. And this life experience taught me that sharing is not a bad thing, because it allows you to have a more meaningful outcome from your ideas. Because it wouldn't just be something meaningful for you, but it also will be something meaningful for other people. What I want you to take from my experience is the consciousness that when you share your ideas, something good happens and you will not regret it. So pick up a brush, speak out loud, express your ideas and let them become ours. Thank you.